Unfortunately, what we're going to build today doesn't actually work. And even with the apartment pack, it still wouldn't technically be functional in game. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of pretending today because even though it doesn't really work how you think it should, it still looks cool. So with that disclaimer out of the way, today we're gonna build a row of three townhouses with some shops on the bottom and some apartments on top. So now hopefully things are making a little bit more sense. That's why I keep talking about how this lot isn't technically functional because in The Sims 4, you can't have multi-purpose lots. If you wanna have a community lot, it has to be just a community lot. You can't even really have multiple community lots on one lot. It kinda has to be just the one. And if you really want to, you can pretend to have extra community lots on the same lot. But as far as the game is concerned, it's just the one type of lot. So if you wanna have a cafe and a bookstore, you have to choose, are you gonna class the lot as a cafe or as a retail lot? And in the same way, if you wanna have a residential lot, you have to just have a residential lot. And as of right now, you have to have just one residential lot. Obviously when the new for rent pack comes out, we're gonna be able to make multi-family lots and like set different units and stuff like that, but we can't do that right now. And even with that pack, we can't have multi-purpose lots like this. We still can't have both a residential and a community lot on the same building. I'm hopeful that maybe in the future that'll come out, especially now that we have some foundations for it. But as of right now, we must still play pretend. So what I'm building here is this little row of townhouses and you saw that I started out with like basically a building shell. I actually built this as a shell challenge over on my Twitch streams. So my Twitch community and I all had the same shell to start with. I built like a random set of three buildings and put it on the gallery. So a lot of us in our community are building this shell right now. If you want to play, you're welcome to do it. It's hashtag Simsy townhouse shell on the gallery. So you can start with the same boxes that I did. I attached mine all together on the gallery. They're like three separate buildings and you can kind of do whatever you want with them. And then what I chose to do storyline wise is to have these three units and then have like a store downstairs and then an apartment for the store's owner up above it. So in a row on the left, the first building is a little cafe. In the middle, we're gonna have like a flower shop, plant store, and then on the far right, we're gonna have a bookstore. And this lot is quite big, so I was able to add in a lot of outdoor spaces too. We have kind of like some outdoor seating for the cafe outside. On the right side, we have like a parking lot, which actually is also pretend because we don't have cars in this game either. It's okay, deep down, almost everything in The Sims 4 requires some playing pretend. It's just that some things require a little bit more pretending than others. And this is one of those days. This is one of those times where like everything is playing pretend, but I had a lot of fun with this building I don't really very often build retail lots in the game It's rare that I'll make a store or even pretend to make a store So decorating this was really fun for me and like decorating the plant shop and then decorating for the person who lives above the plant shop Like I just really enjoyed the pretending and the storytelling in my brain that was happening when I was making this and on the gallery I actually uploaded this as a cafe lot type I went back and forth a lot about how I should upload it I was trying to decide what made the most sense. I kind of felt like a retail lot isn't really all that useful for your sims. The retail lots are fun if you want to run a store and like sell stuff from your store if you have get to work, but I never have my sims go shopping at retail lots. So I didn't want to class this as one of those. Plus it would be kind of weird because there's like all the upstairs space and stuff like that. So I actually put it on the gallery as a cafe because that way you can use the cafe stuff in the left building and then kind of pretend to browse the other two. I just felt like I would get more use out of that with my sims in my own gameplay so that's how I put it up on the gallery. I did consider putting it up as a residential lot and I also thought about waiting until the new pack comes out and then uploading it as a residential lot then because with the new pack you could class all three of the units upstairs as like residentials and then maybe class the downstairs ones as like shared spaces so I guess the game would see it as like almost like a lobby or something <laughs> for the apartments above and then you would just pretend that other people come here even though in reality it's just you and your neighbors that use these three stores. Again, lots of pretending happening here. So we'll have to experiment with that once the new pack comes out and like download it and, and re-change the lot type and stuff to see how it works. But for now, it's on the gallery as a cafe. I'm not really selling this right now, but cafes are such a fun lot type in theory. And then I don't really ever have my Sims use them. I really don't come to them that often. I, I don't get that much use out of them. They're just not really my thing. I don't know why. I guess it's because they're kind of annoying. All of those lot types where your Sims have to go up and like order something at the bar. So like regular bars, the cafes, even the new boba shop with high school years, they're kind of glitchy because like your Sims will try and order and then it takes ages or like the staff member will just leave and not be standing there operating it. Or like someone else will steal your food before you get a chance to grab it. Or like worst case scenario for them, I steal their food before they grab it, which actually does work a lot. 
good because when they're making the food, they'll just kind of put it out, especially in the thrift and boba tea shop from high school years. When they're making the drinks, they just set them down and usually you can get them quicker than the Sims can. So if you're trying to get a free drink in there, just, just grab it before the other Sims can get to it. That's probably not good advice, but you know, stealing is okay sometimes in the Sims. <laughs> okay, but anyway, I'm working on the exteriors right now. I spent a lot of time on the outsides of this lot because I really wanted to have each of these three buildings have a lot of personality. I wanted them to look very, very different. Specifically the flower store, which you'll probably notice very quickly is by far my favorite part of this whole building. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed decorating it. I went all out with the outside. I was going through like everything I could find that was even remotely related. There's actually a large amount of flowery signs and stuff. I used one of those signs from Cats and Dogs. It's just like a plain sign base that you can usually slot little decals onto. It's meant to be like a logo for your vet's office, but I use some of the decals from Seasons. Annoyingly, they don't slot to it, so you can't like automatically place the decals there. You have to kind of mess around and alt place them and stuff, but there's like a little flower freezer bunny and some plain flower decals from Seasons. So I sort of stacked those together and then put it on that sign so it looked like a logo for the building. All three stores have little signs hanging on the wall in there, and then I've got a lot of cute stuff like tables and flowers, and, and there's like a little library cart and stuff like that kind of outside to help really sell it. And then as far as the layout of this building goes, it might be looking a little bit weird to you at first, <laughs> but basically what I did is have the shops downstairs be really small, so I kind of cut back in like three tiles and then drew a wall there. And then I've got the entrances to all the apartments on the back side of this. So the whole front of this building is like the front doors of the stores, and then around the back is the front doors of all the apartments. And so each apartment has like a small entryway hallway with a staircase and the rest of the apartment is upstairs. And it's nice because that way each apartment kind of has like a room downstairs that I use as an office space sort of. And then it made it so we could maximize the space upstairs to fit in like a full bedroom and kitchen area because really these apartments aren't that big. They're really small up there. They're all only one bedroom, one bathroom. This is only a 30 by 20 lot. So trying to fit basically six units here <laughs> is kind of a lot. And speaking of which, this is a 30 by 20 lot in San Sequoia. So that's the world that comes with growing together. And this is usually an empty lot in the world. It's this really nice lot area kind of across the street from the movie theater, if you're familiar with the pack. And by default, it comes empty and it's next door to where that big 50 by 40 lot is. But it's actually really nice for community lots because it's got this like kind of cute plaza sort of vibe to it, especially with the flowers in front of it. This is like very suitable for this kind of lot. I can picture myself building some more apartments here once the pack comes out, but I need to hold off because I keep making these things and the pack's not even out yet. Now there is one slightly weird thing that I did because on the far side of this lot, I put a parking lot, which I think is kind of a strange choice given that this really seems like a very pedestrian area. Obviously also cars are not real in this game. <laughs> it's all pretend. There is a lot of car stuff in the debug sheets. If you've never seen this before, this might seem very alarming to you. I am so sorry to break the news. These aren't real. Debug is basically a cheat level that you can access that has all of the stuff from the environment. So even the landscaping that you're seeing like out around the lot, you can access those plants in debug. And it's kind of a nice feature because you can get access to a lot of stuff that we just don't have in build mode. Like those cages that I put around the trees right there, that's base game debug. The little like parking stops that I'm using, those are actually from the Strangerville debug. And the cars are in a lot of packs debug. And that's because the packs, a lot of times in the worlds, they'll just have cars sort of driving around in the environment. Even like in Willow Creek, if you stand in front of like the Goth family's house, you'll see trams come by, you'll see trucks come by and cars come by. You can't do anything with them. You can't even click on them. They'll drive right through your sim with no hesitation. <laughs> But it's just visual, it's just like a visual thing. There's no actual gameplay function to it. So the same goes with these cars. You can't click on them, you can't do anything with them. They just exist, but they're also free out of debug. So if you're building like a cheap starter home and you wanna have some cute stuff to fill in the lot, honestly, the debug cars are kind of fun. Plus you can make like fake garages and fake parking lots for your community lots. So it helps with the realism, even if in reality in game they don't do anything. I know a lot of people really, really want cars in The Sims 4 and I have kind of conflicted opinions on this because I really like the idea of cars for stuff like this, like the storytelling aspect of putting parking lots and putting garages and like having that there so the builds look more realistic. That's what's exciting to me about cars. I don't really care about much gameplay with cars. I like the idea of like teaching my Sims to drive when they're teens and, and doing that sort of thing, but I don't care so much about like actually having my Sims drive around. I don't really know if, if it's even like feasible in The Sims 4, if I'm being honest. The Sims 4 
is not built for cars. Like all of the worlds that we have so far, not a single one is equipped for cars. Even if you think it is, like Willow Creek, if you think, oh, there's roads, like cars drive on them, they're not real roads. So they would have to go back and fix and change literally everything in the whole game to make cars function. Most of the lots aren't even attached to a road. Like The Sims 4 is very pedestrian in nature just because there is no cars. So there's a lot of lots that are like way up a windy wavy hill in the cottage living world that there's like literally no way a car could ever get up because the entire world design just isn't made for it. So I have no idea how they would be able to do that. In The Sims 2, your Sims didn't like actually drive the cars around really, because The Sims 2 was a little bit more similar to The Sims 4 with the loading screen system, how you had to like loading screen in between lots and stuff. But when you put a driveway down or like a car down, it would adjust the map tile to like connect up to the road, which when I say out loud sounds very strange, but like basically they had a system in place and The Sims 2 was like more flat and all the streets were connected to a road. And it was just built from scratch to, to make more sense with cars. And my fear is that it's too late for cars in The Sims 4, at least for cars that can actually drive around, because the, the game is just not made for that. Like, it, it just wouldn't work. The cars would have to be like bikes or horses, how they kind of like walk around the little pathways, <laughs> you know? So I, I just don't think they could make us functional driving cars. We probably could get cars as like a, a, almost like a decorative thing. Like if you could like work on a car to repair it, maybe it's like an old car and you're trying to fix it up and it won't ever actually drive or something. But I just don't know if they would ever actually do that because if they gave us non-functional cars, people would be so mad. I don't think I would be that mad because I want to have a I want to have a garage. I want to have a garage door. I don't even care about the cars. I just want like a, a garage door so I can make real looking Sims houses. We have some small garage doors and like some fake garage doors. I want a real big like functional like rolls up sort of garage door. But the th if they gave that, people would be so offended. <laughs> if they made that and then didn't give us cars, but I just don't, I don't think that they would do cars. I don't see how it could work in The Sims 4. And I, I know I said that before about like infants and stuff, but the, the infant update was hard, but doable. The cars thing, I, I just don't see how it, it could work in The Sims 4, which I know sucks, but I, I think it's too far gone. I think it was too far gone when the base game came out, but even now, like, the think about it. Like, when you think about all these worlds that we have, how cars just don't fit into them. I'm sorry, we can stop talking about that now. We can stop talking about sad things. I am actually starting to furnish this house finally, so we're working on the inside of the first community lot. This is the cafe area. And once I actually got in here, I realized just how small these things were. I kind of didn't really think about it until I was actually trying to furnish it and I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is really tiny. I could fit like two chairs because I was trying to be careful to make sure I still had enough space for Sims to walk in and order and like kind of queue up to order. And so I realized that if I did that, there was no room for much else. But I think that's okay because there's a lot of outdoor seating. So I'm trying to push the Sims to sit outside instead anyway. And then we move straight on to next door, which is the flower shop. So it kind of started out as a flower store. I was picturing them selling like bouquets of flowers and then it quickly turned into like a plant store. So these Sims sell like potted plants, they sell pots, they sell seeds, they also sell bouquets. So kind of all of your floral and, and plant needs, you can find them here in this store. <laughs> so that's kind of what I was going for with this. On the left side, I kind of put like some rows of shelves with potted plants because I was picturing that your Sims could like come in and, and buy some house decor in here. And then on the right side, there was like the bouquets of flowers, the wedding bouquets that come with the wedding pack. We have like two sets of flower bouquets in this game. There's the ones that your sims can make if you've got the flower arranging table from Seasons, and then there's the ones that you can buy in Tartosa, and I use the ones that you can buy in Tartosa in here because they look a little better. The crafted ones are kind of strange looking at times. They're pretty, but they're they're a little weird. Plus the ones that you can buy, your sims can actually hold because they're smaller as opposed to like the ones that you can make. They're more of a table decor sort of item. And then in the middle is where I have a lot of the like supplies. So there's seeds in the middle, there's like pots in the middle. I think I put some like little sapling type stuff on this table as well. It was really annoying to place all those seeds because for some reason I use the tables that come with the blooming rooms kit and you would think that there'd be a lot of slots on there, right? No, the top only has one slot. So I put one seed packet there and then it 
said it was full. Like it wouldn't let me place anything else. So I had to individually alt place every single one of those seed packets, which is just really annoying. Why you would think it would have at least like four or five slots for a tiny item, but no, just one. A lot of the items in this game have sort of strange slotting on them. Like in ways that you wouldn't expect. A lot of times like stuff that should fit there doesn't and and there's just a lot of weird settings there with the slots, which makes it very annoying because you have to like custom place stuff. And then there's some weird bugs where when you place wallpaper, sometimes stuff that you have custom placed with move objects cheats just deletes itself. So you'll see, watch out for when I start doing wallpaper in here because when I place the wallpaper, one of the seed packets and two of the items from the shelf deleted. I don't know why it was just those, but one seed pack and two shelf items deleted just when I placed the wallpaper. Really strange because it's in the middle of the room, but I don't know. <laughs> That's always happened. That's been a very common issue in this game for years and years. I'd actually argue that it's gotten better over time because it used to be a little bit worse with the deleting of items, but I don't understand the connection of like the wallpaper to objects deleting. The other bug, and I know I talk about this every single time we make a speed build, but the other bug is the weird stair railing glitch. And you'll be so pleased to know that it happened to me three times in this build. And the glitch is where when you try to place a stair railing, you can't see it. It places it. You can see the pillar at like the bottom of the stairs and then nothing in the middle. It, it's like a visual glitch where you can't see the stair railing. And this happened with the last expansion pack update because they tried to fix the stair railings like clipping into the wall and somehow they overcorrected. And so now you can't see the stair railing at all sometimes. <laughs> it mostly happens when there's like a wall touching the stair railing in some way or not so much the wall, but like the edge of a room. I had stairs outside recently on like the edge of a foundation. You couldn't see the railing there. So it's just really, really irritating <laughs> in this case. I had sort of built the downstairs bathrooms around the staircases a little bit just to maximize space. And because I did that, there was like more walls touching the stairs. They weren't completely clear. And then therefore you couldn't see the railing at all. So then I had to overcompensate and I just put walls completely across the stairs. It's really annoying because obviously you don't need stair railings in The Sims, but it just looks really strange when you have a giant tall staircase and no railing there. First of all, that is not up to code. <laughs> Second of all, that's not safe. So it just, it just really is kind of jarring to look at. So I've been complaining about it a lot. I'm sorry, I know I keep talking about it, but it happens in like every build recently. So it comes up pretty often. Now you can already tell that I have spent significantly longer on the interior of this plant room than I did on the cafe. And granted, there's more going on in here. I had to like individually place more stuff, but just in general, I was more excited about it. So <laughs> you can see I just finished placing a bunch of like taller plants and some hanging plants. So I wanted to have a big variety of like many, many, many plant options for sale in here. I tried to do some fun feature wall stuff in here too. I was thinking originally about using that like plant leaf wallpaper, but I decided against it because it was like a little bit too much. And then I used this kind of cool floral wall piece. It's like a whole feature wall item from Eco Lifestyle. And I used that on the wall behind the flower arranging table. So it looked pretty cool there. It kind of made sense too, with it being like a flower arranging table <laughs> to have all the floral stuff on the wall there. Warning you now, I actually cut out the renovating of the upstairs apartment from this speed build just because it was so long. It was gonna be an hour long. The footage sped up and I was like, you know what? This is maybe too far. <laughs> this is maybe a little bit too much. So what I'll do is I'll show you a tour of those apartments upstairs after I'm finished with the build and I'll try and do it quite in depth so that way you can see everything. I just, there's like a line for how long is too long <laughs> and I think that the hour was too much. I've been posting a lot of really long speed builds recently because I've been doing a lot of really big builds over on my Twitch channel, which which by the way, if you want to come follow me over there, this is not on purpose, but I am wearing a Twitch hoodie and I realize this is like, it seems like it's a very long sneaky secret plug, but <laughs> I do stream on my Twitch channel every single day. And most of the time we do builds. For example, this build took me two days to finish, but it's kind of fun. We have a lot of good times over there. And also I mentioned this is a part of a shell challenge that we're doing over on Twitch. And again, a shell challenge is where I post like a big empty box on the gallery and then have people in the community take it and then turn it into something. And it's kind of a fun concept because because like what I might make will be completely different from yours. Usually they're smaller than this because this one is like a townhouse <laughs> inspired by the new pack. Most often it's like a smaller singular unit building and like I might make a house, you might make a restaurant and it's just kind of cool because we all have the same starting point but it becomes so many different things. And we're gonna do tours of these shell challenges on stream. So if you wanna build something 
for it. It's hashtag Simsy Townhouse Shell. Make sure you get the shell off my gallery and then upload the finished one with that hashtag. I might be able to tour yours on stream, so it's kind of cool. We, we get a chance to look at a lot of them. Obviously, there is usually like a thousand uh, entries in the tour request, and obviously I, I cannot tour all 1,000 live on Twitch. <laughs> I do my best, but that's a little higher than I'm capable of. So anyway, I'll just, I'll link my Twitch channel down below in case you want to come hang out with us, and then I'll stop talking about it, I swear. Now, at this point in the build, though, I was just putting back all of those items that got deleted because of the weird wallpaper glitch, and we are officially moving on to the final unit in this building, the bookstore. I think the bookstore and the cafe have quite similar vibes. I feel like in my story that's in my head, both of them are kind of older parts of this building, and then maybe the flower shop is a bit newer. But in here, I put some, like, really old, fancy-style bookshelves. I also added in some, like, custom-placed books and stuff. There's big, tall bookshelves on the sides, and then some shorter ones in the middle to kind of make aisles. We've got like a little desk space where you can pay for your book and check out in the back. And that's the thing, that's kind of another place where this becomes non-functional because I didn't put real retail desks in here. There is obviously like a real retail system from Get to Work, but instead I just put some computers back here. I kind of didn't really want to bother with the retail desks. They're also kind of ugly. <laughs> so I, I just put some computers. If anything, this has more library vibes as far as the game is concerned because you can just like get books and read them in here. Oh, also, oh my goodness, that computer, not functional. <laughs> I put, so the computer is on a bar, like a bar height counter, and then I put a chair instead of a bar stool there. So people actually can't access it. I did that on purpose because I like how the chair looked better. Um, but yeah, that, you can add that to the list of things that aren't functional in this build. I'm sorry. I, it's supposed to be for the vibes. We're playing pretend, okay? It's like my little pretend dollhouse, and it's okay if it doesn't work because it's just cute. <laughs> I'm really not helping myself here. I'm just adding to the list of things that are fake in this building. Okay, but one of the coolest parts of this little bookstore is that I wanted to add in some things that actually looked like books that were for sale. And in Debug, there's actually some pretty interesting like little stacks of books that look very clearly like items that you are selling. And so I got a bunch of those and I put them around. I was kind of picturing them being like maybe like the bestsellers table or like maybe like a new releases section. So they've got them kind of stacked up all cute. And then by the front door, I also put the same thing, but with kids kids books and they're kind of like lower on the wall so they're easy access for the kids. We've got some magazine racks so I, I was just trying to make sure we had a, a large variety of things in here because I liked the the vibes. I thought it kind of told a cute story. Shockingly I also had to hand place each of these individually <laughs> but that's okay. It ends up being worth it because they look pretty cute on the table. This is one of those fun items from debug that you might totally not ever realize exists. If you don't dig around in debug very often you've probably never seen that before but there's a lot of cool stuff in those debug cheats but we are now putting up some of those final last minute touches here in this room, one of the last things that I did in this bookstore that was maybe a little bit out there, but I decided to add in some cat stuff in here. I was kind of picturing th this vision of like maybe the owner of the bookstore has a cat and it comes down to work with them. So I put like a little scratching post and there's a cat bed and there's like some cat food bowls in here. And I really liked the story of that. I thought it was kind of cute thinking about the resident cat who hangs out in the bookstore. And then I put more cat stuff like litter boxes and things upstairs. I did for a while consider putting the litter box in the bathroom of the bookstore, but then I was like, is that weird to have a litter box in like a public bathroom? I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with cats that like live in public spaces, so I don't really know. <laughs> But it's okay, the cat has a litter box upstairs in its home because the owner of the bookstore lives above this shop. I added in some other like little posters and cute book things from the book nut kit. And then that, my friends, is the fully finished three shop townhouse building with three apartments above it that I haven't shown you yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna go pop into the game and give you like a fully finished tour of the whole building. So like I was saying, I built this in San Sequoia up here on this 30 by 20 lot. You'll see I gave it a couple lot traits. It's cat friendly, a cat hangout, and has fast internet. And the area around it is so cool. I really think that this lot is perfect for building community lots like this, but this is what it looks like from the outside. So you can see a full overview of all three units here. I think my favorite part is over here with the parking spaces. We've got this kind of cute mural on the side of the building and some windows. On the roof, I tried to make all three very different. I also put like some solar panels on the plant store. There's like AC vents and some more vents over here. Starting on the far left, this is the cafe and I used a lot of stuff from the university university pack out here. Obviously you can see I've got quite a few tables kind of set up in the front and down the side this way. They've got like a little sign selling stuff. They've got a horse logo apparently. And then on the inside, when you first come in, there's a spot to get some
some books. We've got a very small, small, small indoor seating area. I'm trying to push them to stand outside because there's not a lot of room in here. And then back this way, this is where the actual cafe stuff is. So a sim will be working here. I think they can get in there, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Again, not sure and not making any claims about functionality here of this building, but a sim will be working here. And I tried to put some cute clutter, like some more coffee stuff. We've got like some tea packets. There's some bakery case items. And then around the way back over here in this tiny hallway, there is a bathroom. So your sims have access to a toilet from this building. That is pretty much it inside for the cafe though. There's a couple weird things. Like this door technically is too big. I don't know if you can tell, but if you look closely, you can see the door is clipping. I tried to put a column there to help hide it a little bit, but the door is wider than the doorway is. But because I was doing a shell challenge, I couldn't change that. This is what the shell looks like. And the idea of these shell challenges is that you can't change the exterior walls. You have to keep them all the same. And so I couldn't make it wider or anything. Why is the Bell family here like six times? <laughs> What's going on with that? Anyway, uh, moving on from that, next door is the plant store. And I went all out with the exterior here. They've got like a really pretty flower box. They've got some more plants in the front, pretty signs. They've got this cute wagon. I got more pots in the front. We've got hanging plants and wreaths and stuff. And then when you come inside to the plant store, when you first walk in on the right side, this is that wall of bouquets that I was talking about. So these items are the bouquets that you can buy if you've got wedding stories. And I kind of put them up on these shelves here. In the middle, we've got a bunch of seed packets, whole bunch of different varieties and some like pots underneath and then these are like little seedlings and they've got some more supplies underneath that you can purchase to the left side these are a whole bunch of little potted plants that you can buy so I figured you could get some cute pots in here I like the idea of this place being a nice gift store like this is the kind of item that would be so cute to give to someone as like a housewarming gift <laughs> so I was trying to pick some fun colored pots and things like that I use this cute neon sign and then in the way back over here this is like the the main employee area they've got their desk obviously and this one is functional because it has a bar stool, so they can use that computer. And then I put some tables for them to work on flower arranging and stuff. This one is functional too, so you can make the real flower arrangements with this thing. And they've got that cute flower accent wall. And then down this way, I've got like some taller plants and also some hanging plants that you can buy. And then they have a small bathroom downstairs as well. All three of these places have some music. I put in like some sort of speaker for them. And then on the far right, this is the last store. It's the bookstore. So when you first walk up to this, I've got a sign. There's like a little library card. I even have a book sign on the wall. And then when you come in here, first things first, you walk in and we've got the little kids section right here. I tried to keep it slightly lower so it's at least somewhat accessible for the kids, but that is kind of like adult eye level, to be honest. So sorry about that. <laughs> and then they have a cute little window seat over here. I bet the cat probably likes that area a lot. We have a magazine section and then there's a lot of really old, like big bookcases everywhere in here. In the middle, I've got some smaller ones, another little book cart. Towards the back, this is like the employee area, obviously. They've got some cat treats that you can give to the cat. They've got their desk space that is not functional. <laughs> and then we have over here some more of the books and like some more cat things in the corner. And they also have a small bathroom for the guests to use. And that is the interiors of all three of the stores. And then if you come around the back, way back this way, I pictured the back being the front doors for all of the apartments. So they each kind of have their own little front door space over here. They're kind of all different, but still matching the fronts a little bit. So starting with the bookstore, when you first come in here, you can see that they've got like a small desk office area. Their cat's litter box is here. And you can kind of walk around this weird windy hallway to get upstairs. I had to do that. This is what I was talking about. Uh-oh, I deleted some of my stuff. But I had to do that because this is the railing glitch. You see how it doesn't place the railing? It placed this part, but there's no like visible railing. And that's because of this wall. If I scoot this back, the railing comes back. So just really annoying, very annoying situation there, but I can't do anything about it. So we're just gonna put a wall and pretend that it's not happening. And then when you go upstairs, we've got a really small kitchen when you first walk up the stairs over here. And then to the right, they've got a living room and like a small dining table. I like the color scheme in here with this like sort of teal and reddish color. I based it all on this rug actually. <laughs> and then they have a very small bathroom and then their bedroom with a lot of cat stuff in here too. So that is the apartment for the bookstore owner. If you look next door, the plant store owner has a similar vibe with like a small office. Theirs is probably the best layout down here because if I wanted to, you could probably make this into an extra bedroom like really easily, but I didn't. They kind of have a proper office down here too. And then when you go up, upstairs. They've got a really weird layout up here because you have to walk down a very skinny hallway, but down the skinny hallway, we've got a big open floor plan, like kitchen, living room, dining room. They also have a cat or potentially the same cat just kind of like befriended everybody. <laughs> I'm not sure, but they've got some cat stuff too. And then this is their bedroom and then they have a small ensuite bathroom. I like the color scheme in here a lot, but I think that this is my least favorite of the apartments. My favorite store, 
the least favorite apartment. And then on the far right, the cafe, they've got also a small office space shocker downstairs and their door is also clipping a little bit. You can kind of see it a bit better on the inside in here. It looks kind of weird, but I did what I could with the shell shape. And then you go upstairs again and they've got a small kitchen and living room kind of over here, one bathroom, and then kind of a cute cozy bedroom area. I didn't realize that I gave them two computers. Well, I guess maybe two Sims live here. One of them works in here and then one of them works down there. There you go. <laughs> but that is the whole building. Finally, we've got this ginormous six unit place for you. Hopefully you enjoyed it because I had a lot of fun building this. I think it was really, really cool. Stay tuned because very soon I'm going to be able to start posting some early access content with the new pack. Obviously this one is, is minus the pack, but in the future, very, very near future, we can start posting some stuff actually using the new pack. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And then on that note, I'm going to end this video right here and I will catch you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye everybody. I'm curious to hear in the comments, which of these three is your favorite? Which store do you like the most? I have a feeling that most people are going to be team flower shop, but like a bookstore is always a win. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts.